But firstly, we're going to talk with uh, Gabriel McSharry, a medical herbalist and uh, nutritionist. Good morning, Gabriel. Good morning, Margaret. Now, this morning, we're going to start off um, talking about diabetes and research which shows that diabetes is actually a problem in Ireland. Big problem, yeah. Just a recent uh, screening program by the VHI, uh, pu- pu- I think it was about two weeks ago, they published it. Um, uh, shows there's potentially 30,000 cases of undetected uh, diabetes and we're talking about type 2 diabetes and uh, a possible 146 cases of undetected pre-diabetes uh, in Ireland. Um, so this that's very serious and it doesn't include I guess the, the over 200,000 people who are currently diagnosed with diabetes. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was quite a shocking statistic. Uh, it was in the, in the national media there about ten days ago or two weeks ago. But um, uh, there's a few things you can do to uh, prevent uh, and treat type two diabetes, and I just thought it would be beneficial to outline them. Um, but give it, what, what's the difference in, in type one and type two diabetes? Yeah, Is so one more severe than the other. Uh, I guess so. Yeah, I mean they're 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 quite different, really, when it comes down to it. But type one diabetes is a condition generally acquired at a very young age, uh, where the body loses its ability to produce insulin. Type two diabetes is a condition acquired uh, when the body's cells become less sensitive to insulin, uh, creating insulin resistance. So type two diabetes, uh, it used to be called adult onset diabetes years ago, uh, as it was only seen in adults. But now in recent years, adolescents and children are developing the condition, so they had to change the name, and now they call it type two. Okay. Um, so uh, th- there's quite a big difference in the, the treatment protocol as well. Uh, so type 1s need insulin, need to inject it. Type 2 uh, can be reversed. It's um, uh, a condition that, uh, well, in the New England Medical uh, uh, Journal of Medicine in 2001, they stated that they acknowledged the fact that diet and exercise can reverse type 2 diabetes. So it's very much a condition of lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, there can be a genetic predisposition, but it it, uh, it doesn't mean it's a predetermination. Do you know? So if there's diabetes back in the family, it just means you have to be careful with diet, lifestyle, uh, and nutrition. Okay. Um, so and is this where your blood sugar levels are risen? Is it or yeah. Are up so blood sugar tends to be high. Okay. And the reason is is the cells uh, aren't as sensitive as they used to be to insulin. So insulin isn't doing its job. So it it creates a domino effect and go on for years and mm-hmm. that's why I mean the VHI research was quite shocking that there's could be up on 150,000 cases of undetected pre-diabetes so pre-diabetes is where you your blood sugar well your blood sugar is probably high uh, on on maybe a, 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 a blood glucose fasting blood glucose test and um, uh, but it, it may be high just uh, at that one time and uh, is that because maybe you're after eating or, or something well, that can Put it up or could be you were at, at a well, once if you do it, you, you generally have to do a fasting in the morning. You go into uh, your GP in the morning time um, and you take it before breakfast. So that's an eight hour fast there or thereabouts. Um, so you, you do it that way to get an accurate reading. But uh, you know, if you have a massive amount of sugar, uh, say if you're at a birthday party and you, or something like that, yeah, you need the loads of there, cake and the biscuits. There, and there is a chance that it could be high for long yeah. periods, or it, it could end up in the urine. It's another detection, but. Uh, in, in general, pre-diabetes is, uh, you could be in that for a year or two before you get fully diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Uh, so it is something that if you catch it in pre-diabetes, I mean, it can be turned around. Even in, in, if, if a full diagnosed type 2 diabetes, it can be turned around with diet and exercise. It's very important to know this because, um, I mean, with diabetes, type 2 can progress into type 1 after many years where one would need to inject insulin. And, uh, you know, with diabetes long term too, there's other um, associated health conditions that you're predisposed to. And that's, uh, you know, peripheral neuropathy, some numbness in the, in, the, in the feet and hands, or it can affect the eyes and the heart and so on and mm. so on. So but if you aren't sure that you have diabetes, do you, do you have any symptoms, um, you know, to, that present to make you think? There's something wrong with me. Yeah, not. sure. Uh, I, I think probably the most uh, uh, obvious ones would be things like if you um, get energy slumps throughout the day, we say your energy goes in peaks and troughs. Mm. That 
that will be indicative of blood sugar uh, irregularities. So is this kind of where you could be full of energy and then maybe in the afternoon all you want to do is lie down and sleep or just exactly. lie on the couch and have a snooze or whatever? Yeah, sure. And yeah. But that would be reoccurring. That wouldn't be, we'll say, for example, maybe you were busy all weekend no, or like all weekend yeah. or it's had a busy day at work. Monday, yeah, it's not a Monday thing. <laughs> but it it'd be, it could be every day, every yeah, second sure. day, whatever. It'd be an ongoing thing where uh, I think uh, more obvious is, is if it happens within an hour after a meal, if you find you just lose energy completely, like a, a, an energy slump um, when you're back at work at your desk or whatever, that's a good uh, indication that you you've have a, a hypoglycemic slump where the blood sugar goes low, um, and that could be um, because of a spike in insulin. And it just means, or it could start off in the morning, uh, basically, you know, if you're fuzzy in the morning, you know, too sure why, and energy kind of goes up for a while after breakfast and hits rock bottom, mm. uh, or if you have a lot of sweet cravings. Um, uh, or, or food cravings, but generally sweet cravings to get mm. sugar back into. Is that the body. kind of when you hear people saying, "Oh, I need some chocolate to to lift me energy, or it gives me energy when I when it I lift it"? Or it something. could be. Yeah, yeah, these are these are indicators. indicators. And, uh, what you should do then is um, make an appointment see your GP first time in, uh, thing in the morning and uh, go in fasting and just get a blood test and he'll check for uh, a fasting blood glucose test. And if your blood sugar is high in the morning, which it shouldn't be, mm -hmm. because you're after fasting. Fasting for the last yeah, eight hours, okay. uh, it would indicate that uh, you could have a problem with uh, blood sugar. You know that your cells have become desensitized to insulin. Insulin isn't, isn't doing its job. So uh, from that, there that should be a wake-up call to uh, radically uh, change your diet and lifestyle. That'd be my opinion on it. Um, so what are we doing wrong in our diet then? What or what can we do to improve our diet? That, that may help if you have type 2 diabetes to reverse that and there, there's a number of things uh, I suppose the first and most profound one is, is weight uh, weight loss uh, so this is a key factor for everyone afflicted with the condition and uh, in the past it used to only be obese people who developed type 2 diabetes but today uh, is a strong correlation between excess weight and type 2 diabetes but it's not always the case um, However, it's very important to aim to get uh, your, your weight into normal body mass index range, and that's between 18 and 25. And it's you can go into the go on to Google or the internet, and you'll get a body mass index calculator and weigh yourself and measure your height, and you can work it out easily. Um, but <coughs> it'll be important to get that into the normal range between 18 and 25. And the thing now that more so is people who accumulate weight around the the tummy area, is it? The tummy area. Mm -hmm. That they're more predisposed to developing diabetes. Uh, so if you're uh, the type of person who accumulates around the, the midriff, uh, around the waist, um, but in general, it's it's uh, there. There's exceptions to the rule as well, but it's just a generalisation. But diet is a big one, and uh, obviously. Uh, diet for uh, diets that would uh, help with weight loss is important, but that's a, a different show altogether. But there's a few uh, general dietary guidelines uh, that are helpful. Uh, so in order to control blood glucose uh, and keep it within normal ranges, one can control the amount of glucose being put into the body. So table sugar <coughs> and everything that contains it, like soft drinks and sweets, should be avoided. Uh, alcohol should be avoided. Alcohol, the body treats it kind of like a sugar. Um, uh, healthy sources of sugars uh, are from vegetables and fruits uh, and they still turn into glucose in the body uh, but in their whole form they're accompanied by fibers uh, which re regulate the release of glucose into the bloodstream and are restricted from r rapidly spiking high so consume fruits and vegetables in their whole form and avoid juices and concentrates. Uh, care needs to be taken with the consumption of grains so uh, wheat and bread, cereals, barley, rye, uh, pasta, um, rice wraps, uh, rolls, all grain based biscuits, all grain based stuff, uh, uh, be careful with it um, because uh, these tend to be consumed after being processed and milled and can also spike blood glucose and in fact the majority of clinical trials in the scientific literature examine, examining low carbohydrate diets show positive effect on diabetes markers and that's your blood glucose, your blood lipids, uh, blood insulin and weight reduction. Um, so a person with type 2 by diabetes in my opinion would, would benefit greatly from omitting grains altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, 
artificial sweeteners, I'd avoid these, um, and you get them in diet drinks and diet foods. Um, as not only do the uh, is it questionable regarding safety, but uh, we know now that the scientific research shows that they actually trick the body into thinking it's consuming sugar, so it releases insulin anyway. And um, just a few shows ago, uh, we had here on Ocean FM with Therese, I uh, read out some research where, in fact, now the research shows that diet artificial sweeteners and diet foods make you fat so this is a shock yeah because yeah some people think that you know diet foods help them others will say no that they don't so you're better off with the regular well the thing is they were designed initially uh, as diet aids so um artificial sweeteners when they come out in the market like when they were legalized onto the market they were there as uh, diet aids but uh, to help with weight reduction but they don't do that now they actually uh, make it worse so really they're not uh, filling their purpose put it that way uh, so be careful with them exercise is a big thing exercise is vital for everyone but especially uh, a type 2 diabetic physical exercise increases the sensitivity of the cells to insulin and therefore reduces insulin resistance in the body so exercise alone re- re- reverses that kind of pathology in, in type 2 diabetes and it's very important uh, herbal medicines uh, some new research on uh, um, berberine containing herbs so that's hydrasis canadensis berberus vulgaris uh, organ grape root all these herbs uh, show to increase insulin sensitivity gymnema uh, cinnamon um, these are all uh, shown in clinical trials and uh, trigonella. These all improve insulin resistance and improved insulin sensitivity in, in clinical trials. So they'd be helpful to add into the mix along with the diet and lifestyle as well. Okay, and the, that's important, your, your diet and your lifestyle after that. Um, now, what are your views on spelt bread? Yeah, spelt has become common there in the last 10 years, and uh, it's an ancient grain, spelt. Um, so it tends to have uh, different proteins than the, the common grain, that's uh, the common wheat that's out there in normal uh, breads. Uh, and, I mean, uh, a gluten sensitivity or wheat protein sensitivity is a big thing now. A lot of people have allergies to it in Ireland, especially in Ireland. Uh, and people who have a mild sensitivity may find that if they'd spelt uh, that sensitivity was away or it's not as profound uh, so uh, spelt has less gluten but it does have gluten that's important to know because some people uh, find that uh, uh, they're gluten intolerant or gluten sensitive and um, they think oh right well i'll just start eating spelt and i'll be fine now you may know initial uh, you may see initial improvement but really you should avoid it altogether that would be my message there. Avoid okay. weight altogether. Right. Um, now, this listener has bad pains in my legs at night, and I have them in the day as well. The night is the worst. It's from the knee down to the foot. What can I do? It's hard to get to sleep. Yeah, well, it's a circulatory problem, uh, I'd be pretty sure. And um, really, you can do things to increase circulation. Um, and that will be uh, exercise uh, in the day. Um, even though it might be painful or you might I think it, the medical term could be claudication for what you have kind of heavy legs and then kind of numbness and that um, uh, but um, definitely exercise also uh, before, if it's worse at night the uh, thing I get people to do is to do um, uh, run hot uh, have a foot bath uh, you know with hot water in a basin and stick your feet in it uh, and then right after uh, run a cold tap on the feet um, and what that will do is it kind of excites the blood vessels into going from dilation to constriction back to dilation and it improves circulation down there and see does that uh, help it that, that also works for people who are burning in their feet at night time mm. and that's just a simple thing one can do as well on top of that the circulatory stimulant herbs uh, one can use um, the, uh, I guess uh, culinary herbs one could use in their diet first off would be um, the likes of cayenne uh, pepper or, or ginger or horseradish these are all uh, circulatory stimulant uh, and we have some other herbs and tinctures that can work very well as well mm-hmm. um, and do they need really to go to their GP as well just to make sure that there isn't any other underlying problem when they have some such bad pain in their legs for sure if you haven't had it checked out uh, and it's uh, you know inhibiting uh, quality of life 
definitely um, uh, go to your GP and see is there something more serious wrong with the vascular system. Mm -hmm. So the cardiovascular system is the heart and the vascular system is the veins that the heart feeds, we say, of, of blood. Now it's it is not, it, my guess would be there's insufficient circulation getting to your extremities, down to your feet and, and so on. Now, uh, oddly enough, this can be also a symptom with uh, diabetes. Um, so if you haven't had a checkup, definitely do. Um, then other than that, I'd uh, explore things that it, it improves circulation and mm -hmm. see if they help. So exercise again. And just finally, uh, chronic constipation. What can they take? Yeah, it's a big one. Uh, it's it's very common. Um, I'd look at uh, diet sensitivities, uh, see if they have uh, certain allergies uh, to foods, um, and the certain foods then that can be beneficial. One uh, now with chronic constipation, it's it's a it's a it's a, uh, a long treatment, and nothing you can take tomorrow will fix it, right? Because you have to retrain the bowel and the digestive tract. It's a muscle, so you have to kind of retrain that muscle and get toned back into the colon. But uh, in the meantime, things like uh, flax, whole flax seeds, uh, a tablespoon three times a day, put it on your food or whatever. Get the whole ones, not the ground ones. Um, uh, they can be beneficial. The, the, some old-fashioned ones like prunes and, and prune juice, they can be good. But uh, other than that, on, on the herbal medicine side, we have three forms of herbal laxatives. Uh, there's stool softeners which draw more uh, water into the colon, there's bulk laxatives which give it structural bulk and uh, that induces peristalsis and the third ones we use judiciously so we only use on a short period of time and they're stimulant laxatives like uh, uh, senna and ramnus mm. um, and uh, they should really only be used on, on the short term along with the rest and then wean off the stimulant ones because they irritate the line of the gut and induce uh, a bone motion but you can become dependent on them so long term uh, they, they're not a long term fix but they're beneficial uh, I use them a lot but in, in kind of a, an initial stage of treatment while then I'd use other herbs thereafter while you retrain and, and get torn back into the bowel okay and uh, I, I presume diet is important as oh, well diet is uh, definitely so uh, again there's, there's, uh, cut out all the processed foods and sugary foods uh, and look into possible sensitive food sensitivities and, and gluten sensitivity Fresh is foods. probably the main one okay Gabriel McSherry, medical herbalist and nutritionist. Thanks for joining us. You're back in two weeks' time with us again. Thanks, Re Mike. Rejoin me in Ocean Life just after this break.